Distinguished future physicians, welcome to Stomp on Step 1, the only free video series that helps you study more efficiently by focusing on the highest yield material. In this video, we're going to be covering the neurocutaneous disorders, neurofibromatosis, tuberous sclerosis, and von Hippel-Lindau. This is the sixth video in my genetics section that has a total of seven videos. And I suggest you check out the rest of these when you're done with this video. Neurocutaneous disorders are a group of rare genetic disorders that affect multiple organ systems. As you would assume, the main systems affected would be the nervous system and skin. But other systems can be affected as well. Most of the disorders in this class are going to have multiple benign tumors form. And all of the types that I'm going to be talking about are autosomal dominant inheritance. The first one we're going to be talking about is neurofibromatosis. And as you can see here, I give it a high yield rating of 3. For those of you who don't know what that is, it is a rating scale from 0 to 10 to give you a rough estimate for how important each topic is for the Step 1 exam. If you'd like to learn more details about how I calculate the high yield rating, you can go to my website here. It's pretty easy to remember that neurofibromatosis is characterized by neurofibromas, which are tumors of the peripheral nervous system. They are benign for the most part, but can cause problems because they can compress nearby structures. They usually present just beneath the skin as many rubbery skin colored growths. And you can see an example of that here. The next symptom that is suggestive of neurofibromatosis is cafe au lait spots. These are small light brown macules on the skin, similar to some types of birthmarks, but when you have multiple cafe au lait spots, that's when it would be suggestive of neurofibromatosis. And here's an example of that. Next thing we have is bilateral vestibular schwannomas, or bilateral acoustic neuromas, either name works which are benign tumors of the vestibular cochlear nerve or cranial nerve 8 that can compress nearby structures and often lead to hearing loss. In this case, since it's bilateral, you're going to have hearing loss in both ears. You can also have pigmented iris hamartomas, which are referred to as Lisch nodules, and these are pigmented spots, many pigmented spots, on the colored part of the eye. You can see an example of that here. You've got all these little brown spots in the iris. And additionally, you can have tumors in other parts of the body, mainly in the CNS. You can break neurofibromatosis down into type 1, which is more so characterized by the neurofibromas, and type 2, which is more characterized by the bilateral vestibular schwannomas. But type 1 versus type 2 isn't very important for step 1. The next one of these we're going to talk about is tuberous sclerosis. I find these questions a little tougher because unlike neurofibromatosis, there aren't really buzzwords that seem to show up in all these questions about tuberous sclerosis. It can present with a wide range of things and test writers don't seem to single in on any specific thing when they're talking about the question stem or the answers. So it's pretty tough and honestly with these questions, I usually just rule out the other related things. So I rule out stuff like neurofibromatosis. And if nothing else fits, that's when I select tuber tuberous sclerosis because it can present with a lot of different things. One of them would be facial angiofibromas or adenoma sebaceum. You can see a picture of that here. These lesions on the face. You're also going to have brain or cortical hamartomas, which are called tubers, which is where the disease gets its name. You can have nodules in the ventricular system, renal angiomyolipomas, which are tumors made up of vessels, fat, and smooth muscle. You can have cardiac rhabdomyomas, ash leaf spots, which are hypopigmented, so neurofibromas can have cafe au lait spots, which are hyperpigmented, so they're darker brown than the rest of the skin. And tuberous sclerosis can have ash leaf spots, which are hypopigmented, so it's lighter than their surrounding skin. You can also have seizures and mental retardation. Last one we're going to talk about is von Hippel-Lindau syndrome. 
which is caused by deletion of the VHL gene. You're going to have cerebellar and or retinal hemangioblastomas. You have renal cell carcinomas, as well as cystic lesions in other parts of the body. Here are some other diseases in this classification that are low enough yield, I've given them a high yield reading of zero and chosen not to include them in the video. You can go study them if you'd like to, if you find them interesting, but I wouldn't suggest spending much time on these topics until you've mastered all the higher yield material. That brings us to the end of this video. If you find any mistakes or typos, please comment at the bottom of the page so I can fix it. I'm hardly an expert on any of the topics I cover. I'm just a regular med student like you, trying to help out some of my fellow colleagues, so there are bound to be some corrections that need to be made.